Today I'll be reviewing a 2023 Lexus IS500. Now this is a weird car for Lexus because right now sedans are not that popular. In fact, most manufacturers are phasing out their sedans in favor of SUVs. Also, V8s are not very popular. They're being phased out for turbocharged V6 or I4 engines. But Lexus decided to go against the grain, stuff a giant V8 inside a small little sedan the IS500. So in this review video, I'm gonna tell you everything there is to know about this brand new IS500 and also tell you about how it drives so you can decide if this is the right car for you. All right, let's get started. This IS500 should not exist in today's market. And here are the reasons. These days, everyone are buying SUVs. The reason being, you have a higher driving position, they're more airy, more comfortable. They're able to haul more, better suited for families, for hauling friends around, for hauling gear and luggage. And they offer all wheel drive or four wheel drive, right? So it's no surprise that these days, Americans are all opting for SUVs. This is not an SUV, this is a sedan. That's number one. Number two is everyone is opting for fuel efficiency these days. Manufacturers are phasing out their V8s for turbocharged six cylinders or turbocharged four cylinders. This IS500 is using a big honking V8, a fuel thirsty V8. <laughs> of course, there are advantages, but I would say most manufacturers would say there's more disadvantages than advantages. So when you combine a big honking thirsty V8 with a small little sedan, you can see why this car really shouldn't exist. This is not a money maker for Lexus. They will sell very little of these cars every single year. This is a car made for enthusiasts, people that have made it in the world that could afford a car like this, one that looks as spectacular as this, and one that is fun to drive. Now, let me talk about some of the changes and some of the things that you may notice with the IS500 over, say, IS350 or IS300. First of all, if you're looking at the outside, there are a few little cues, small cues. For example, the hood bulges out a little bit more because Lexus needs to make room for that big honking V8 underneath the hood. So there is a bit more bulge up front because this is a F Sport. You can see the grill is completely blacked out. That spindle grill has a unique F Sport design very aggressive, and those tri-beam headlights also look fantastic. They have that Nike Swoop daytime running lights integrated within, you have tri-beam underneath, right? And the front end is a very, very aggressive look. And I love it, I love the front end. You move to the side too, you'll notice that aggressiveness. The IS500 sits low to the ground. It has different suspension, sport tune suspension. Also, it does have special wheels. For this year, the wheels have been upgraded, 19 inch alloy wheels, but they have a different design, like a shadow look. But overall, I think they fit the profile of this IS very nicely. Out back, it's more noticeable this is a 500. You do have that deck spoiler on top that does stand out a little bit. But in case that's not enough, well, just look at the tailpipes. You have quad tailpipe but they are staggered this reminds me of the old isf that was released years ago right they definitely took that design and it gives the back end of this is 500 a really unique look and with the very sleek looking led tail lights right the combination of everything looks fantastic even though looks are great it definitely isn't the biggest selling point to this is 500 it has to be this v8 engine you're getting 472 horsepower and 395 pound feet of torque made it to an eight speed automatic this is one of the biggest v8s out there especially in a small little sports sedan like this and it definitely makes the drive so, so enjoyable. I mean, when you're just cruising down the road, you know, your daily commute where there's a lot of traffic, stop and go, stuff like that, you're not going to hear it. 
But when you put your foot down, when you're trying to pass someone, when there's no one around and you want to just tap the gas a little bit, you hear that exhaust and it's so, so glorious. I mean, it really makes this car worth it just for that alone. The exhaust is outstanding with this IS500. But of course, that's not all. I did mention the sport tune suspension. It does make the drive a little bit bumpier, but I gotta say it's not as bad as I thought. So when you are taking turns and bends, right? You definitely feel more in control, less body roll. I mean, this is a sedan that's low to the ground already, but this is, the sport suspension does a better job. But the trade-off is, yeah, the bumps, imperfections, you definitely feel a little bit more. Also, I'm quite surprised by the tires. They have very, very, very little sidewall, right? And performance tires. So I thought I would hear more from the road. No, it's actually super quiet in here other than the exhaust. Nothing from the outside. It's very windy today. No wind, no, uh, wind noise. Cars passing by very muted. Road noise also very muted. So that's a surprise. So that adds to the luxuryness of this IS500. But I would say its suspension is good. The steering also uh, definitely feels sporty. There's a nice, nice weight to it. Not a whole lot of play in the steering wheel. I'm, I'm moving the steering wheel around like right now and I feel it in the IS. So you get a lot of precision. You definitely feel like you're more in control, way more than you'll feel in any SUV out there or even regular sedans. Right, so I like the steering. The steering is nice. The steering wheel is also fantastic. I love the shape of it. I love the thickness, the way it feels. The bun layout is very easy to understand because this is a performance sedan. You have paddle shifters in the back. You have an S-Sport badge underneath. I, I like it. It feels good. When there's twisty roads and bends, you will enjoy driving this IS500. The visibility all around isn't bad. Even though the front windshield is raked, I can see out front pretty clearly. Same thing with the back, side windows, blind spot, all pretty good. Of course, you get blind spot monitoring, right? The warning on your mirrors, but blind spot's actually pretty good. You do feel cozy in here though, that's, that's for sure. You definitely feel cozy and some of you guys will enjoy that. But as for the rest of this cabin, inside this IS500, you know what, you have a good blend of modern and luxury together. The seats, beautiful. White leather seats contrasting against the black leather of the dash and center console, love it. The seats up front and in the rear, both look gorgeous. The up front seats are very aggressive. They're holding my back very tightly. Again, helps when you're making sharp turns and bends. Normal driving, I would say, it's okay. It's better than some of the F-Sport seats I've tested before where the bottom side bolster would cut into my thighs. I actually don't get that problem with this IS500, uh, so they did fix that. So in terms of F-Sport seats, this is actually one of the more comfortable ones. The rest of the dash design, very Lexus-like. The pop-out infotainment screen, you got a 10-inch screen here. It is touch, you can use your finger or you can use the old archaic uh, touchpad, but they haven't upgraded this to the new interface or the larger screen that you see in the new NX and the new RX, but it's just a matter of time. And you do get a small little digital gauge cluster, right? That actually moves, it actually moves. When you first start a car or turn off the car, you can actually see the gauge cluster moves, right? That's pretty cool. But as for the resolution and brightness of both, I find them a little bit lacking. Today's a bright day and you could see it's not really coming out on camera. So I do wish that Lexus would upgrade those in the future. Now, everything else in here is pretty standard. This is a Lexus, this is a luxury car. So you do get memory seats. You also get rear sun shades with this trim level. Heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, drive modes, those are pretty standard. You have a sunroof on top, home link buttons, right? Those are like the normal stuff. But of course, you're buying this car for <laughs> for that, that's why you're buying this car. 
the acceleration and the exhaust. <laughs> Are there any downsides to this IS500? Of course, there's many, many downsides. First of all, this is rear wheel drive, which is great, except when you're driving in snow or heavy rain or mud, all wheel drive would be nice. That's available on a lower trim level, the IS400, but with this top trim level, no all wheel drive option. But for some of you guys, you may not care about that, which is fine. But as for the tech features inside, I would say a little bit lacking compared to the competition. Also performance wise, if you're looking at the IS500, you can't really compete with the top trim levels from the Germans. For example, the AMGs, the Ms, the RSs, this is really not competing against those trim levels or class. This is kind of like a step below, right? You're getting a thrilling ride, you're getting a big V8, but it's not nearly as fast as some of those other guys. But also keep in mind, because this V8 fuel economy isn't the greatest, so that's another negative to this. You're getting about 17 in a city, 25 on a highway, and overall 20 MPG combined. For a sedan of this size, 20 is no good. So that is the trade-off for the exhaust, for the acceleration, for the fun. Zero to 60 comes in around 4.3 to 4.5 seconds, which is respectable. Also, because it's a small sedan, space is lacking. In the rear specifically, I'm sitting behind my driving position. I'm five feet 10. You can see I only have one inch of leg room and about one inch of headroom. So if you're over six feet, sitting behind a six foot driver, you may have some comfort issues. Right, so not optimal for car seats and big people. As for cargo room, it's okay. Cargo room isn't bad. You can still fit bags of groceries and golf clubs, but again, not the biggest trunk space. And even though when you fold down the second row seats, you can see half of the opening is taken up by the seats themselves. So this is definitely not a car that is very spacious and not one meant to haul a lot of people around. Back passengers also don't get a lot besides vents, that's it. There's no USB ports, no ports of any kind, no side sunshades. You would figure a luxury car like this, at least throw in a couple of USB ports, none found. Now as for pricing, there are several trim levels and it really depends on the engine you choose. The base, the IS300 comes with a turbocharged i4. And that one starts right around $40,000 and you could also get the IS300 in all wheel drive. If you wanted more power, you get the IS350. That's like mid 40s. And of course, you get a bigger 3.5 liter V6. If you wanted more power like this one, the IS500, it starts in the mid 50s. And of course, you're getting the big honking V8 engine. Now with the IS500, you could get the F Sport Performance or the F Sport Performance Premium. And Premium gives you a little bit more features. And if you do opt for the Performance Premium, the price is over $60,000. So it really depends on what you're looking for and how much power you want. So to conclude, am I a fan of this IS500? I'm very conflicted because the car enthusiast inside me says yes. I would love to drive a comfortable car like this, one that looks great, great to drive, a big V8 under the hood with extremely good exhaust note. Would I love to drive this every day? Yes. But the other side of me says no. This is definitely not a car for me. However, you may be different. If you are looking for a sports sedan like this, one that isn't very big, something that is small, that's cozy, right, that looks great and you want that v8 and you could care less about fuel efficiency well then this may be the right car for you leave your thoughts in the comments below and smash it a like subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys later Bye bye